starts right now. Good morning to you. It is Thursday, April 2nd. Thank you so much for being with us this morning, everybody. All right. We always look for those little positive kind of inspiring stories because we're surrounded with so much bad news right now. And little I think nuggets of positivity. Yeah, I think this works. It really you? does. And when we found this one yesterday, day before yesterday, it actually brought you to tears. It made me cry. It did. It made me cry because it just goes to show that there is still humanity in this world and that people do take care of people. So here's the gist of it. A doctor gets pulled over for speeding, really speeding. And instead of giving this doctor a ticket, the officer gives her a mask. Sarash Denjua wrote in a Facebook post last week that when a Minnesota state trooper pulled her over and looked at her Massachusetts license, he asked her what the heck she was doing so far from home. Well, she told him that she travels to the state every month to work as a fill-in cardiologist. Denjua, age 37, wrote the trooper went to his car to scan her license plate number, firmly told her that it was very irresponsible of me to be speeding, especially since I would not only take up resources if I got into an accident, but would also not be in a position to help patients. So the Minnesota State Patrol shared on Facebook that more people were speeding and driving aggressively in the midst of the coronavirus pandemic. And they said his name is Colonel Matt Langer is asking Minnesota motorists to do their part to make sure hospital beds are available for those dealing with COVID-19. All right, so Jen Gio wrote she felt chastised, waited for the trooper to hand her a ticket. Instead, he told me he was going to let me off with a warning. As I sputtered to apologize and say thank you, he reached in to hand me what I assumed was my license back. It was not. It wasn't until her hand had closed around what was given to her. The unexpected bulkiness drew her eyes to it, she said. Five N95 masks from the supply the state had given him for his own protection. Brought her to tears. She said, though it may just have been the cold wind, I think he teared up a little as well before wishing me well and walking away. So he said, in my darkest moments, I've worried what would happen if I felt got sick far from home. The doctor did. And he said, she said, this complete stranger who owed me nothing is more on the front lines than I am. Shared his precious mask with me without me even asking. We are going to be okay. Let's take a look at your GMSA rundown. With more than 5,000 deaths now reported from COVID-19 across the country, President Trump striking a grim tone. A couple of weeks starting pretty much uh, now, but especially a few days from now that are going to be horrific. A new model shows coronavirus cases in New York not peaking until the end of April, two weeks later than previously believed. If this model is correct, this could go through the summer. Joe Biden's campaign says a talk between the former vice president and President Trump is being arranged. I think he's probably a nice guy. No, if he'd like to call, I'd absolutely take his call. The nation's top coronavirus expert has had to beef up security after receiving death threats. Dr. Anthony Fauci has personal security now from law enforcement at all times, including at home. Two Holland America cruise ships at sea for nearly a month remain in limbo as they arrive in Florida today with hundreds of sick passengers. We are beginning our first First look at an alternative care facility at the Bear County grounds at Freeman Coliseum. There's room for at least 500 beds here. Bear County Judge Nelson Wolf says the facility would be used in the event hospitals are overwhelmed. A local Toyota supplier is switching gears and now producing face shields to supply to health care workers. They're making 5,000 protective face shields a day. Sandra the orangutan lives at a sanctuary in Florida and she started washing her hands after seeing the zookeepers do it. So be like Sandra. Take a look at this five-year-old sporting a unique haircut. <laughs> George asked his older brother for what he called an old old man hairdo. They told them it was time to go back to school, so they got ready, packed their bags, and headed outside. Can you tell me what day it is? Can you tell me the date? Bad dad. Bad dad. Bad dad. And the funny thing is they all fell for it. Yeah, they We did. needed that laugh. That's awesome. Got their books all together, got all dressed. Oh boy. I'm glad we I'm glad we played it safe yesterday. Yeah, I am too. Yes. And you know what? If you are going out and you want to play it safe yourself today, you need to grab an umbrella. Yeah, just in case. Uh, we think there could be some showers and storms today. Nothing on the radar yet, but that could change a little bit later. There you see the cloudy skies outside. It is gonna be a cloudy day. We're not expecting much in a way. Uh, sun. Let's take a look at rain chances to start. About a 40% chance today. We up that to a 60% chance tomorrow 
and Saturday. Sunday about a 50% chance, even on Monday a 40% chance. So we're going into a very active pattern here and we could get some stronger storms tomorrow. Forecast for today 73 degrees, again about a 40% chance of some showers and storms. Let's take a look at the radar. And we'll show you that there really is nothing to see here. Most of that is ground clutter south and east of Pleasanton and around Victoria. But what I want to watch is an area in the hill country. A little bit later this morning, some showers uh, may begin to develop there. And we could see a little bit again here around San Antonio. Pauling Count is in. Oak went even higher today. It's at 6,030. My hope is that with the rain, and we have some good chances here, that it will knock some of that pollen out of the air. Forecast for today. Again, 73 rain chances are there. They'll taper off a little bit this evening, but pick back up tomorrow. Severe threat is still there. We'll discuss more about that coming up here in just a couple minutes. Guys. Thanks, sir. Uh, earlier I saw an incident where it appeared to be clearing where somebody ran off the road or lost control, something like that. I'm not seeing it in any of these shots right here. The wrecker was on the scene, so perhaps it is clear, but we have a collision happening down on the frontage road, 1604 Petranco, EMS, fire, and uh, PD are on the scene as well as the wrecker. This hopefully will be clearing in the next 20 to 30 minutes. Top stories that we're following for you today. Three teens are in custody. Two are in the hospital after a standoff with an off-duty Universal City police officer. This happened around 9 o'clock last night when officers responded to the shooting in 13,000 block of Blanco Road here in San Antonio. Police say five teens tried to break into cars at the Landera Apartments. When the off-duty Universal City officer approached the teens, he says they pointed a gun at him and threatened to kill him. And that's when the officer fired his gun nine times hitting two of the suspects. The teens were later taken to the hospital with non-life-threatening injuries. Police were able to arrest the other three teens. This morning, San Antonio Mayor Ron Nuremberg and members of the City Council will be briefed about the city's response and preparedness regarding the coronavirus pandemic. That briefing will take place during the regular City Council meeting, which started just a few minutes ago. The city will also discuss possible action regarding the pandemic, which has resulted in nine deaths in Bear County so far. 231 COVID-19 cases have been reported as of last night. 45 people have made a full recovery. Right now, the stay home work safe order is in effect through April 9th, but could be extended. If you want to watch the city council meeting, we are live streaming it in ksat.com and we have a crew there as well. And the bells of the San Fernando Cathedral, they will ring out in sorrow and struggle throughout downtown San Antonio later on this morning. They're set to toll for one full minute as part of an effort to recognize and remember people who have died from COVID-19 as well as those who are still struggling with the illness. Mayor Nuremberg has also called for a moment of silence citywide. It's a live look at San Fernando Cathedral in downtown San Antonio. Now the tribute scheduled to begin at 920 a.m. So in just a few minutes, we will be taking it live on air. So please stick around. Well, right now it's 905. It's time to take a look at some other morning headlines, including some new and very sobering unemployment numbers that have just come into our newsroom in the last couple of hours. Yeah, yeah these, these numbers will shock you. 6.6 .6 million Americans, a little over that. Although they that's, were expecting it to be pretty high. They were expecting it to be high, but still when you look at that number, you're like, it's, man, that's, that's a lot of folks. Would happen. And then you add that to the 3.3 million the week before. So you're looking at right at 10 million people have applied for <sighs> unemployment benefits just in the last couple of weeks. Oh. So that tells you what uh, what kind of situation we're in with this COVID-19. So we'll talk a little bit more about that on KZ 12 News at noon. Now, in the meantime, this is one of those stories where you just kind of shake your head and wonder what a train engineer in California decided he wanted to crash his train into the USNS Mercy. That's the medical ship docked in California to help relieve some of the strain on hospitals caring for those COVID-19 patients in Los Angeles. And you can see Eduardo Moreno drove the engine off the end of the tracks through some concrete barriers across a parking lot where he just missed several cars and then he went right through a fence. Looks like a movie scene, doesn't it? The good news is he came up about 800 feet short of the ship. No one injured. The bad news, he spilled some fuel and a hazmat team had to be called out as if they didn't have enough to do already. According to prosecutors, Moreno thought the ship was suspicious and didn't believe it was helping fight COVID-19. He was charged with one count of train wrecking. His public defender has not commented. All right, let's take it to Michigan near Detroit. Car being chased right here. Gets to ride some traffic. Tree right up there. And watch what happens. Car meets tree. Ouch. Yeah, that's what was left of the car right here. 
<laughs> not much. Two suspects carjacked a vehicle. They are in custody. They managed to drive through several counties. Several law enforcement agencies got involved. The two were wanted for armed carjacking and several other incidents. They both survived the crash, although an eyewitness said one guy was getting out of the car moaning and groaning when they put him in the back of that ambulance. And once again, a more creativity during this coronavirus pandemic. A couple in Michigan getting married this weekend. And as you can see, the pews in the church are already full. Their guests, cardboard cutouts. Dan Stucklick is the groom, and he didn't want his wife getting married in an empty church since they're under the stay-at-home orders in Detroit. So he got with a local packing company. They made some cardboard cutouts to replace the family and friends. You see there's Rita, and look over there, there's Uncle Jim, and Aunt Susie is there, along with the entire Williams family, as you can see, sitting in the pews. He's like, yeah, they're, they're, they're all friends. Look, and then there's the couple. Good night, John Boy. Good night, Mary Ellen. How cool is that? What a great idea. And finally, since some of the elderly folks are really stuck inside and gets kind of lonely in there, volunteers bring in some special visitors to the assisted living facility in Iowa. The residents seem to really enjoy the animals. The llamas showed up to visit. This is just a fun way to kind of remind them that they haven't been forgotten, that they are very, very loved, um, and that um, just a way to make them smile. The organizers hope to bring them back one day when the residents can actually get up close and pet the llamas. But what a great idea. So, you know, the, I, and I like the folks in there with their cameras out, their cell phones. And now we got this modern technology thing down. We're going to take some pictures of this. So that's right. That's some major stuff, llama event. Yeah. Ooh. Creative ways, Creative ways. Of making people smile and not feel isolated. Like that. That's right. More nuggets of optimism and positivity. And if you're getting married, just invite the cardboard family. That's right. They'll I think show that's up. a good that's idea. Right. That sanitize awesome. them first. I love that one. That's one of the best ones I've seen yet. It's a good one. Oh, and the, I guess the, was we said the packing company didn't charge them a dime for no, doing the yeah, cutouts. No, didn't charge it. Didn't charge them anything. Yeah, just love that. Cut out. And they and the cutouts were pretty good. I mean, they looked like humans sitting there. Not so. bad. They need to decorate them like we do the yeah. cardboard kids. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. That'll be another project. David, thank you, sir. Right now we're at 909, 65 degrees still ahead on GMSA at 9. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord, is right. Jack Black does what Jack Black does best. And the teacher pulls drive-by visits on quarantine students. The stories are coming up in today's Take a Look at This. Something stricter than stay-at-home orders? Several Texas cities are taking matters into their own hands. Alana Rocha from the Texas Tribune will have details on what that means. And after the break, Cheddar's back, everybody. Hey. We're going to check in with Baker Machado for your tech and business headlines. Let's check the markets right now. The Dow is up 86 points, about 85 points, uh, 21,027. Hello, everyone. This is your daily tech and business briefing from Cheddar. Apple has acquired popular weather app Dark Sky. Starting on July the 1st, Dark Sky will no longer be available for download on Android phones. Now, those with an active subscription will still be able to receive a refund. In addition, Dark Sky will cancel new third-party signups by users starting in 2021. Many users enjoy the app for its hyper-local forecast and on-the-spot rain alerts. Meanwhile, many retailers now limiting the amount of people who are allowed in their stores at any given time. This over the coronavirus virus. Home Depot temporarily capped the number of shoppers allowed in stores in order to encourage social distancing. Meanwhile, Costco will allow no more than two people per membership card to enter their warehouse. Both companies employing those measures to limit crowds and hopefully slow the spread of the virus. And Snap says video calling on its site increased by over 50% in the last month. This is more people are following federal guidelines on social distancing and turning to video conferencing. The company also says that Snap sent between users hit record highs as well as the number of group chats. And that's a Cheddar Business Attack Update. I'm Baker Machado from New York. And Baker. Baker working from home as well. Baker is back. Good to see you, Mr. Good Machado. Day. Hey, let's take a look at some pictures of healthcare workers around San Antonio. Thank you so much to the staff from BAMSI. And this is Mick, also from Bamsey, a nurse over there. Thank you guys all for your hard work during this difficult time as you continue to work those tireless hours. To submit a picture of healthcare workers in your life or family friends, just go to ksat.com, search for community galleries. We continue to celebrate those folks on the front lines of COVID-19. So we've been all hunkering down, stay at home, work safe, but now you got to hunker down because of the rain. That's right. Mm -hmm. What do we do now for about the next week, Justin? Yeah, well, stay indoors, right? Uh, we're I still believe 
is the name of a movie that's one of those early theatrical releases you can get on Vudu. I think it's $20. Uh -huh. You get it for two days. Great family movie. Okay. Just okay. So beautiful, there's one. feel good family movie. Good advice. I still have to finish Tiger King, so I, I've got more to do there. Yeah, a little bit of homework there. And I started <laughs> yeah. Ozark season three. Me too. Last I started night. that yesterday. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah, for sure. Uh, let's jump in real quick. I think we have the uh, kid forecast coming up. Am I right? I think. Over here, Lexi. Good morning, San Antonio. Currently, the weather outside is 66 degrees, a high of 78, a low of 53. 0% of rain, a 5 miles an hour wind, and 64% humidity. Go outside, enjoy your day. Make sure you stay social distancing. Back to you, sports. There are no sports. They're canceled because of Corona. <laughs> they're canceled because of Corona. I mean, they're, they're, they're spot on. That was Alexis oh, and Dean, by the way. They very creative. Job. Yeah, you know, these uh, these kiddos need something to do. A little bit of science thrown in there. We love it. We've uh, got some more submissions coming in, so we'll continue Good. to show those. Yeah. All right, let's talk about the rain. They mentioned it there. We've got... Uh, just cloudy skies right now. No rain out there at the moment. 65 degrees, current temperature. Dew point is at 60. East southeasterly winds at about 7 miles per hour. And uh, we're really not seeing much on the radar right now. But I mentioned earlier, I want to watch this area right here in the Hill Country. That's where we could see some development uh, a little bit later this morning uh, towards midday. We could see a couple of thunderstorms popping up. And that's what the computer models are telling us. This is one of our uh, models that we use, uh, short range anyways, and it does show that some of these showers and storms may develop, move up towards the Austin area, and we could see a few showers here around San Antonio. That's through the 3 o'clock hour, so we'll keep an eye on the radar for that. But it, it will stay cloudy today, and the forecast keeps rain chances in there. We'll put about a 40% chance in around San Antonio. I'd say Highway 90 North, that's the, that's the area with the, the best chance today. Temperatures will be right around 73. Dew points have increased substantially. We're now looking at dew points in the 60s. It's muggy out there. We have a lot of moisture to play with as our cold front that is scheduled to move in tomorrow. It, it's going to run into that moisture and, and warmth, and that's why we're thinking thunderstorms are a pretty good bet as we get into tomorrow afternoon. Temperatures right now 65 degrees at the airport, 64 New Braunfels, 61 in Rock Springs. Here's the setup. we got a dry line out west. This really isn't going to do much for us. It's uh, really a non-factor today, I think. But this is the frontal boundary that we're watching. You see all the snow behind it. It's pretty cold up there. Nine in Casper, six in Cup Bank, 26 now in Denver. So the change is underway and that cooler air is uh, sliding south and that's why we're looking for uh, the potential for storms tomorrow. So we mentioned the activity today. This is around four o'clock and let's fast forward to tomorrow morning. We've got some drizzle, maybe some late showers, but really the action is going to kick in during the afternoon. So by noontime, we're starting to see showers and storms as some disturbances move across. Here comes the front and I think it's uh, during the late afternoon and evening hours where we could see some of the stronger storms. And this paints a picture of a pretty busy scenario uh, tomorrow evening. Front slide south. Things should quiet down for a little bit as uh, those storms move south. But I still think we'll see more showers and potentially a couple storms on Saturday too. Severe weather risk is there. On a scale of 1 to 5, we're still at about a 2, so a slight risk here. And the main threats are going to be some hail, some gusty winds initially. Then I want to watch for the potential of some flooding as these showers and storms sort of stick around into tomorrow evening and tomorrow night. There could be some pockets of heavier rain, maybe 1 to 2 inches in some cases. So 60% chance of rain tomorrow, 60% chance on Saturday. Notice it is quite a bit cooler, 68 74 Sunday, 50% chance of rain. And the next week looks pretty active too. We'll get some scattered showers and storms during the afternoon, but temperatures do warm up back into the 80s by Tuesday. Guys. All right, thank you, thank Justin. Thank you. We've been mentioning that the uh, mayor has asked, asked us all to take a moment to recognize everyone who is impacted by the coronavirus. It's time for a moment of silence, and then we should hear the bells at San Fernando.
Very powerful as we hear the bells ringing from San Fernando Cathedral and you can hear the birds chirping in the background. It is just eerie. It's a challenging time for all. Someday we'll look back after this is over and think about how we lived through this. We did. We did it. And it will end one day. Yes. 921, 65 degrees. We'll be right back. Welcome back. It's 924. Well, if smiles are in short supply around your neck of the woods, we have something that is sure to change that. We're positive. Actor Jack Black has come up with a cure for the quarantine blues. Here's seen as Jeremy Roth with uh, today's Take a Look at This. Comedic actor Jack Black is a man of many talents, but I think it's fair to say that subtlety isn't one of them. Just take a look at his TikTok debut, a shirtless flamboyant backyard boogie that is seriously the video everyone needs right now. The 50-year-old's unhinged freestyle performance appears to have been shot at his home, but he's clearly not taking the quarantine lying down. His self-labeled stay-at-home dance features high kicks, spins, and even a dodgy attempt at a Russian doll dance. He may not win any technical awards, but the popular vote is in. The domesticated Dancing with the Stars moment has already been viewed over two million times. Watch an Alaska elementary school teacher pull drive-by visits to wish her students well. Like many others, Anchorage schools are closed due to coronavirus concerns. So Kelly Shrine has taken to the streets to stay close to her students from a safe distance. Hi, Bailey. I miss you. Shrine coordinates with parents, some of which let the visits be a surprise for the kids, and she takes the opportunity to remind her students to keep reading during the closure. I miss you very much. Lots of reading. Take care. The vehicular visits allow her to keep the relationship strong until the schools reopen. For Take a Look at This, I'm Jeremy Roth. I hope we have these feel-good stories every day. Jack Black has the moves. He sure does. He's hilarious. 926, 65 degrees. Still ahead on GMSA at 9, people around the world are coming up with unique ways to pass the time amid the pandemic. Erica Hernandez, live from her home with details on what writer J.K. Rowling and one local San Antonio artist came up with. This morning, federal officials pushing for more Americans to stay at home to prevent the spread of COVID-19. CNN's Whitney Wilde joins us live to break down the very latest. And unemployment in Texas spikes over 800%. We have the numbers, and you're going to hear how the Texas Workforce Commission is struggling to keep up with a flood of claims. It's our Tribune Thursday report. When it comes to stay-at-home orders, some Texas cities are taking things a step further. And state agencies that handle jobless claims, it's swamped with over 150,000 new claims. Alana Rocha from the Texas Tribune joins us from home once again with more on both stories. Good morning, Alana. Good morning. All right, Texas reported 731 more cases of the new coronavirus Wednesday, an increase of about 22% over just the previous day. The total number of cases now at 3,997. That spike in cases came just a day after the governor issued what essentially amounted to a statewide stay-at-home order. But several cities are taking matters into their own hands, enacting stricter guidelines starting today. So what are you seeing? Yeah, I mean, take Houston, uh, one of the, if not the hardest hit uh, here in the state. The mayor there, Sylvester Turner, has said they've entered into a handful of three-month leases with hotels to try and safely uh, quarantine uh, city workers, first responders, the homeless, those people who are interacting with the public more and more vulnerable to uh, getting the infection. Uh, then you have, you go along the border, El Paso uh, is saying anybody who goes more than 100 miles outside the city upon their return, they need to self-quarantine uh, for two weeks. Down in Laredo starting today, if you uh, leave your house, entering any other building, you need to have your nose and mouth covered uh, to, again, try and uh, minimize the spread of this uh, disease. And in Westlaco, they're limiting uh, anybody entering to two people after they saw grocery stores and other public places overwhelmed with several members of a, a single family shopping for one household. Uh, they're, they're really just trying to rein it in as far as people adhering to these stay-at-home orders. 
Let's talk unemployment, Alana. More than 155,000 Texans filed unemployment claims the week ending March 21st. That's an 860% surge over the previous week. Mm -hmm. That number reflects people who filed claims the same week the state's urban areas and eventually Governor Abbott began shuttering bars and restaurants, dining rooms. Uh, the Texas Workforce Commission, Commission, the agency that handles unemployment claims, is absolutely swamped. What is the agency yeah. doing to address not only the influx, but these types of claims? Well, at least on the influx end, I mean, they normally get, before all this, uh, between 13,000 and 20,000 calls in a day. Uh, but the week ending March uh, 21st, as you, you spoke about, um, they got 1.5 million calls. Uh, several of those fi people filing called several hundred times trying to get through, kept getting a busy signal. So the agency is repurposing hundreds of employees to be able to take these calls. They're contracting with a, a call center to be able to add bodies to answer the calls. But people who get through, some at three in the morning uh, is their tactic, staying up all night, uh, are finding that their claims are denied. And they say that the current parameters, uh, you know, as far as not being on the job long enough or things like that, don't apply. This is an unprecedented situation. And, uh, you know, the old standard is the old standard and they need to modify those requirements. So uh, people who are even getting through, uh, you know, still have a lot of questions and, and need to call back. And uh, as the agency ramps up those numbers, they'll hopefully be able to get through and get some answers. God, my lifetime, I've never seen anything like this and never thought I Ditto. would. Yeah. All right, let's right. talk about um, respiratory patients because we know that people with serious respiratory conditions like emphysema and congestive heart failure are especially vulnerable to this pandemic. <clears throat> so doctors are having to change the way they treat these patients if they're hospitalized with breathing problems. How? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, normally they would uh, use a nebulizer, which is like a face mask system that uh, liquefies or takes liquid medicine and kind of makes it into a mist uh, to be able to treat these patients. But then that spreads or has the risk of spreading more of these viral pathogens endangering first responders. And so not knowing whether or not a patient has uh, COVID-19, they're, they're looking to intubate them, which is more invasive, more dangerous for the patient, uh, you know, uses a hospital bed longer. Uh, so they really want point of care tests. And we know this week the FDA approved such tests that, you know, can get a result in a few minutes. So doctors know whether or not the patient is infected. But uh, even though the FDA approved it, uh, the understanding doctors have here is that those tests are going to go to the harder hit areas first, like New Orleans and New York, before they reach Texas. Okay. Uh, and new on the trip, an update on price gouging, what the state is saying about that. Alana Rocha from the Texas Tribune, yes. thank you so much. Stay safe. You too. Thank you. Live cam giving us a look outside. We're waiting on the rain around here. When might we see some? I think we could see some as early as this afternoon. We're not seeing much right now on the radar. It's, it's pretty quiet. We've got a couple of returns that are starting to show up north of town. Let's jump right in and show you what it looks like here. Everything's really light. I, I do think we could see a couple of thunderstorms, though, uh, later today. So we'll keep an eye on the areas around Kerrville up towards Austin. That's where we could see some development here over the next uh, few hours. But so far, everything's pretty quiet. Temperature-wise, 63 degrees, Comfort 63, Canyon Lake 64, New Braunfels. You've probably noticed the humidity has jumped up quite a bit. It's going to be a, sort of a stinky, humid day. And that doesn't change over the next seven days uh, because we'll have some uh, good rain chances all the way through. Today, about a 40% chance of rain. Temperatures, because of the cloud cover, probably staying down quite a bit. 73 degrees for a high. Rain chances taper off a little bit this evening and tomorrow morning, but they pick back up tomorrow afternoon. That's when we could see some of those bigger storms, maybe some hail and gusty winds. We're going to talk about that threat here in just a few minutes. Guys. Quick look at Transguide. We're looking good at 410 and Babcock. A San Antonio artist has come up with a lighthearted distraction to the current coronavirus pandemic, and J.K. Rowling starts a new online initiative for Harry Potter fans. With details on those stories and much, much more, we say good morning to Erica Hernandez, joining us live from her home. Hi, Erica. Hi, Erica. We miss seeing you in person. Oh, guys, I miss you guys, too, and, and good morning to all of y'all. So we've seen, you know, we've seen traditional Loteria cards in the past. Well, one San Antonio artist, Rafael Gonzalez Jr., is changing it up with a version called Pandemic Loteria. After getting such a great response from the first card he created, he decided to make over a dozen more. Other cards include La Botella, which depicts a bottle of hand sanitizer. 
Um, El Hoarder shows rolls of toilet paper, and El Homeschool features a tablet. Gonzalez says he created them as a lighthearted distraction from all the news and being stuck at home. He goes on to say that the essay community relates to Loteria, and it brings a sense of comfort, family, and fun during all of this. You can see all of the cards by visiting his Instagram page, and we have a link to it in this article right now. What a good idea, guys, for families to kind of look at these and kind of get a chuckle. I'm hearing some kind of extra audio yeah. from you. Do I you know, hear that too? Yeah, some I weird. I hear that too. Yeah, some sort of weird bleed over audio. We'll try to troubleshoot that at some point here, but we can move along. Yeah, we can move along. Yeah. We still hear well, you. Anyway, so that's interesting stuff, stuff though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, next up, let's talk J.K. Rowling, and who has launched an online initiative, www.harrypotteratome.com. It features quizzes, games, and other activities. Also, for the month of April, you can get a free audio and digital edition of the first Harry Potter book. Rowling says she hopes these initiatives will give children and even adults a happy distraction during, during their first stay at home town. And finally, KSAT 12 this month will be celebrating the life and legacy of Selena. Right now on our website, you can enter our Selena Lookalike Photo Contest. In order to enter, all photos must be uploaded to our contest form on this article. The entry with the most votes will be the grand prize winner of a $150 visa. The card voting has already opened and will end Friday, April 10th at 4.30 p.m. You can vote once an hour for your favorite entries. Already we've gotten many submissions and a quick reminder on April 12th, our Siempre Selena special will air right now, right um, on here on Case at 12 at 9 p.m. We're so looking forward to that. And I, it sounds like maybe there's like an audio bleed. What? We're in our final edits of the special right now, and I can tell you guys it's going to be amazing. Oh, I can't wait Looking to see Looking forward it. to it. Eric Hernandez live from home. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Uh, Leslie, can I just say something about what we're about to talk about right now? It's going to sound opinionated, mm -hmm. but I think it's factual. Okay. I think the country of Malaysia, the government, has stepped into a pile of stupid. I think you're right. Ladies at home, listen up. And men, you should listen up, too, exactly what never should be done. No. Uh, okay. Malaysian government's telling women not to nag their husbands during the coronavirus lockdown. Yeah, they that had is to, sparking some backlash. They had to apologize uh, for how women can, after issuing suggestions on how women can keep their husbands happy throughout the coronavirus pandemic. So they have a series of online posters with the hashtag women prevent COVID-19. That's their hashtag. Malaysian Women's Affairs Ministry urged women to dress up wear makeup at home, and avoid nagging their husbands to keep peace throughout the lockdown. We're not even kidding. One campaign poster depicted a man sitting on a sofa and asked women to refrain from being sarcastic when asking for help with housework. Avoid nagging your husband, another poster advised, trying to make light of the advice using a voice similar to that of an anime character. Whatever. Another urged women working from home to dress nicely and to wear makeup. The posters drew condemnation. A quote, it is extremely condescending both the women and men, said a uh, spokesperson for the All Women's Action Society, a Malaysian advocacy group. She's telling this to Reuters, quote, these posters promote the concept of gender inequality and perpetuate the concept of patriarchy. Patriarchy. That's it. Yep. Okay, but here's the thing too. There's a serious side to this. When we're as we're joking about that, no tips on how to deal with hashtag domestic violence because local media reported on a government hotline, domestic abuse victims have received nearly double the usual number of calls since the start of the lockdown on March 18th. Oh, the hotlines that that help those victims. The victims, mm -hmm. yes, yeah, so sh showing that the cases of domestic violence have increased dramatically. And a, a quote from one Twitter user, which I think is appropriate, how do we go from preventing baby dumping, fighting domestic violence, to some sad variant of Obedient Wives Club? So they're trying to apologize now and say, yeah, maybe that wasn't the best taste to do it. Come on, people. Oh, and by the way, Malaysia, I think, leads the way in part, that part of the of the world for coronavirus cases. I just I saw that somewhere in here. Yeah, it does. It, it yeah. absolutely does. So there you go. Okay. Yeah, step into a pile of stupid, like mm -hmm. I said. 941, 65 degrees. You're watching GMSA at 9. Nicely put, work husband. White House officials are discussing an antibody test for the coronavirus. CNN's Whitney Wilde is live with details.
Welcome back, 944. More than 200,000 Americans have been infected by COVID-19, and nearly 90% of Americans are under some kind of stay-at-home order. But as the death toll continues to climb, both federal and state officials are still pushing people to stay at home. CNN's Whitney Wild joined us live from Washington with the very latest. Good morning, Whitney. Good morning. Well, good morning to you. Uh, there's breaking news out of Washington this morning. Very encouraging news. The FDA has issued its first emergency use authorization for a coronavirus antibody test. This is so critical because it will help determine if there are asymptomatic carriers. It helps determine the prevalence of an infection throughout a community. And the antibody test could also be helpful in developing a treatment for coronavirus. Mark and Leslie. All right. So if they've already approved it, I think I heard somewhere today that New York is going to start using it like immediately. Is that what, what you're hearing? I haven't heard about which states are going to use it right away, but what I can tell you is if past is precedent, the minute people find out that an antibody test might be ready and might be available, there is a crush to try to get it as quickly as possible. And as we know that New York is one of those mega hotspots, it wouldn't be surprising to me at all to hear that they are one of the localities and one of the states rushing to try to get this antibody test very, very quickly, especially because they have so many people hospitalized. And this test is really critical to determine if people on the front lines of healthcare, doctors, nurses, first responders, also are carrying that antibody. We talked a little bit uh, this week about asymptomatic carriers. Again, it's very important to determine who those people are to limit the transmission from asymptomatic carriers, Mark and Leslie. Whitney, uh, President Trump said he was considering cutting off air travel from some coronavirus hotspots, but he was hesitant. Did he, did he say why? Well, he's very reluctant to put what he says another crushing blow uh, and another clamp down on the airline industry, which is already struggling. So right now within the administration, there is a very active discussion about whether the risk to the airline industry outweighs a potential reward of cutting off any travel, any air travel to those locations. Uh, he said he's open to it, but it's, he is at this point very reluctant, Mark and Leslie. Well, the FBI says there's been a huge surge in gun purchase background checks. So can you break down those numbers for us? Absolutely. So there was a 41% surge in, in background checks, which is uh, just another way of saying an attempt to purchase a firearm. Between February and March, there were 3.7 million requests for a background check. And that is the highest number in a single month that we have ever seen here in the United States since the FBI began this background check system in 1998. Experts are saying that this isn't uncommon when there is a, a huge shift in political, in societal uh, function that people might rush to firearms uh, as startling as that might be for some people uh, there are also experts who say that any uncertainty quite often fuels the drive for more gun sales mark and leslie uh, whitney we've been all business now for a couple of weeks now how are you doing there in dc oh me <laughs> You are so, it's so funny. You're so nice to ask. Um, well, I wish my three and one year old were still in daycare, but other than that, you know, everything's fine. Working from home with little kids, as everyone knows, is virtually impossible, but um, we've watched 101 Dalmatians five times today. Some of the other reporters that we've been talking to, we've have had appearances of their children yeah. running into the shots and stuff. And but, you know what? It just means that we're all in this together yeah. and every household's pretty I was much the same. I feel terrible because every time I go on the air, I'm like texting my husband, be quiet, turn off the TV, <laughs> take them upstairs. Earlier, the baby was crying. Uh, you didn't hear them running around just now, did you? No. Nope. No. Could but, you hear that? But it's okay. The new hashtag is cameos are cool, Whitney. Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> Whitney Wildstein, and thank you so very much for all you do. Oh, okay. That's a relief. Okay, you're all good. Thank you. Thanks, you Whitney. Too. We'll Bye. see you soon. That's awesome. I know. Alana Rocher with the Texas Tribune. We've, um, yeah. got, we've been able to meet her daughter, adorable toddler, too. Yeah, I like yeah. how we got to pull the curtain back for there one second. We ask her how she's doing. All of a sudden, a whole different Whitney Wilde appeared. I know. <laughs> Shoo! Just like the rest of us, yeah. right? Yeah. Hanging in there. Well, you know, it's funny. My daughter, uh, who's in first grade, they had like a Zoom conference with the whole classroom. Oh, cool. How'd it go? And it was, well, it was funny because she was walking around with the iPad like, hey, look at my house, everybody. Like, Aww. You know, <laughs>
everyone was uh, showing stuff. It was that's it was really neat. Fun. And here's my dad in the Lazy Boy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, anyway, all right. Uh, a little cloudy out there right now. We're watching for some uh, showers and storms a little bit later this afternoon. Uh, right now, 65 degrees at the airport, 66 Port SA, 64 Stinson. And we've got east southeasterly winds right now, 5 to 10 miles per hour or so. Double radar shows we got a couple showers up there uh, across the northern parts of the hill country. Nothing much yet, but this is sort of the area that if we're going to see any rain today, we'll, we'll probably start to see that pick up next couple of hours. Here in San Antonio, things are dry. We only have about a 40% chance of rain today here in town. Again, I think a lot of the action is going to be up there around Austin and then points off to the north and east. Still, we could see a couple light rain showers. The better chances of rain, of course, we've been talking about come tomorrow. 40% chance through about uh, 3 o'clock. We'll taper it off a little bit this evening. Temperatures up around 73 for a high today, so not all of that warm uh, because we have the cloud cover in place. And you see all the clouds are pretty extensive here across uh, Bear County right now. 65 at the airport, 64 Randolph, 64 New Braunfels, and then uh, some 70s down to the south. Really, everyone is seeing cloudy skies at this point. Maybe a few breaks as you get down to the coast. Dew points are on the rise. We're in the 60s now. You can feel it. We're back to the muggy situation. It was nice to have the dry air while it lasted. But from here on out, it's going to be pretty sticky. I'd say over the next seven days or so as we get into an active pattern. Here's the setup. We've got a dry line out west. This doesn't do much for us today. And of course, this is the front we've been talking about. It will slide south tomorrow, and this is going to be the big weather maker uh, tomorrow afternoon. Some cold air behind it. We're looking at temperatures in the single digits now. Cut bank down the Casper. 26 in Denver. Big cool down there. And we're going to feel some of this cooler air on Saturday. Temperatures will cool down some. Here's a look at the future cast. We talked about the showers and storms today, and then as we get into tomorrow, maybe it's just some drizzle tomorrow morning, and then tomorrow afternoon, even by midday, we're starting to see some showers and storms come in as the energy starts to pour into the area. And then along the front, we should see quite a bit of activity, and some of these storms could be strong to severe. So that's sort of the time frame we really want to watch. Even at 10 o'clock, we're going to get some showers and storms right along the front, and we could be looking at some pockets of heavier rain too. Severe weather risk. Uh, we've, we've got a slight risk tomorrow. That hasn't changed, and uh, the main threats are really going to be hail and some gusty winds initially, and then once these storms sort of come together, we're going to have to watch for the potential of some flooding and some heavy rain. I think one to two inches in some spots is certainly a possibility. 79 tomorrow, 60% chance of rain, 60% chance on Saturday. If you're hoping to salvage a weekend, it doesn't look great because uh, that front's going to sort of hang around. We'll still get some showers and storms Saturday. Uh, another little disturbance on Sunday and more chances next week as well. We'll be right back. Hey, real quick, we want to let you know that at 1230 today, Governor Greg Abbott will be a guest, of course, not in person. It'll be via Skype or something on our noon show. Ur Ursula and David Sears will be able to interview him and ask questions. So please tune in. That's at 1230 today. Okay, real quickly, I want to tell you, although Kobe Bryant passed away in January, his wife, uh, his widow, uh, Vanessa, posted yesterday online that his latest installment of Kobe Bryant's The Wizarded Book Series was released Tuesday. Uh, welcome, welcome back Dren and the West Bottom Badgers. This is so cute. It's another magical basketball season. That's the caption they said. The Wizard Series Season 1 is a supernatural youth adult novel that follows Reggie, a basketball player hoping to become the best. It's from Brian Scranity Studios' website. And they also were behind the Academy Award winning short film he won an Oscar for, Dear Basketball. That's true. Thanks for being with us, everybody. Have a great day, everyone.